In this video, we're going to take a look at everything we've learned about the addition rule, the multiplication rule, the complement rule, permutations, combinations, anything else that we've learned in chapter four. We're going to put them all together into some practice. Now for each of these questions, I'm going to be doing all of the calculations in Excel. So I suggest that you do the same, get out a blank spreadsheet and get ready to practice. Again, I'm going to be using Excel for all of these. And I just want to preface all of this practice with one thing. Don't beat yourself up if this is difficult for you. This is probably the hardest section in our course because a lot of people really struggle with probability and these are probability questions on steroids. So give yourself a little bit of grace and just work along with me and don't be hard on yourself if you don't get them right. So the first question is dealing with a group of 12 tourists. They're visiting London. At one museum, a discounted admission is given to groups of at least 10. So at least 10 says that I can have a group of 10 or I can have a group of 11 or I can have a group of 12 to get the discount. And again, I stopped at 12 because there are only 12 tourists. How many combinations of tourists can be made for the museum visit so that the group receives the discounted rate? So this is not just going to be one quick answer in Excel. I need to think about how many ways can I have a group of 10 out of 12. Now a group implies that the order of people in a group doesn't matter. So I'm going to be using a combination of 12 choose 10. I should actually put this first. So this is group of 10 and then a group of 11 and a group of 12. So here I'm going to use combination 12 and I'm choosing 10. And then this is going to be a combination of 12, but I'm choosing 11. And this is going to be a combination of 12 and I'm choosing 12. So I have 66 and 12 and one which means how many combinations total can be made to get the discount. So this is total, which means we're going to be finding the sum of those. So I can use the sum function, which we haven't talked about, but sum is sum, right? We're just finding the sum. So the answer for question A is 79. There are 79 different groups that can be formed to tour the museum at a discounted rate. Now question B says, suppose that the group of tourists does get the discount. What's the probability that it was made up of 11 of the tourists? So now we're talking about probability of 11 given that they got the discount. So it is a conditional probability. Now, remember what that means. The numerator is going to be that they got the discount and had 11 in their group. Well, there were 12 in that group. There are 12 different groups of 11. Whoops, I have to put equals. So equals 12. Now the denominator is that they got the discount. Well, who gets the discount? There are 79 ways to get the discount. So again, instead of choosing 12, I can actually just point to the cell C3 divided by the sum. So there is a 0.1519 or about 15.2% probability that a group that got the discount was made up 11 of 11 tourists. Okay, let's look at another question. Jack is setting a password on his computer. He is told that his password must contain at least three, but no more than five characters. So let's just start to get set up here. So three characters, four characters, five characters. He can use either letters or numbers for part A, it says that each character can only be used once. So what I know is that for a password, order does matter. So the arrangement of the letters does make a difference. So I'm going to use a permutation. Oops, permutes. Now the question is, what's the total number of items that I'm permutating? Well, there are 26 letters in the English alphabet and there are 10 digits, zero through nine, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's 10 total. So that's 36 different things that I can choose from. And 
I'm going to choose three of them. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with 36 items, but now I'm choosing four. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with 36 items, but now I'm choosing five. So again, I'm just going to then find the sum or the total. So I'm going to use the sum function to find the total. So the total different passwords that Jack can choose is fairly large. So now what? That's the answer for A, 46,695,600. Now suppose Jack's computer randomly sets his password using all of the above restrictions. And what is the probability that his password is an arrangement of the letters on his name? Now this question I feel is poorly written. So if we are finding the probability, so I'm going to start with an arrangement of Jack. So those are all different letters. So how many letters are there? There are four. So I'm going to permutate his four letters and I'm going to choose all four of them. So there's 24 different ways that we can permutate the letters in Jack's name. Now it's unclear from the question whether or not I can have the letters of Jack's name and just have three items or five items and so on. So I'm going to assume that we're talking about only the letters of Jack's name and not the letters of Jack's name and some other letter or number. And obviously for three, three items, I'm not even gonna include that. So for me, I'm going to find, oops, the probability of some arrangement of Jack given that it's four characters. So I'm not gonna include the three characters or the five characters in my probability. Now, why does that matter? Because my numerator is gonna be 24, but my denominator is not going to be the sum. I'm just going to choose the denominator of four characters. So that's my solution. Now, you might be saying, what, what does that mean? Well, remember, if I have a solution that looks like this, I'm going to get my pen out here. If I have 1.69765E negative five is essentially what I have. This says I need to take the decimal and move five places to the left. So the negative five, negative says move to the left, five says move five places. So it's essentially, 0 0.00016976 That's what that solution means. Five places to the left. So it's a very, very small um, probability that a randomly chosen password of four characters is going to include the four letters of Jack's name. We'll do one last question together, then I'm going to have you try a few on your own. So Tina's packing her suitcase to go on a weekend trip. She wants to pack three shirts, two pair of pants, and two pair of shoes. She has nine shirts, five pair of pants, and four pair of shoes to choose from. Assuming that everything matches, how many ways can she pack her suitcase? So this one is a bit more complicated. So first I'm going to look at the number of ways that she can pack shirts. Then I'm going to look at shoes. And then I'm going to look at pants and then we'll talk about what to do with those. So how many ways can she pack shirts? Well, she has nine shirts and she wants to pack three of them. Does the order matter? No, it doesn't. She's got a, you know, a combination of shirts is what we're looking for. So equals combin, she's got nine shirts to choose from and she's choosing three of them. How many different pairs of shoes? Well, she has, again, combin and she has four pair of shoes to choose from, and we want two pair of shoes. And then for pants, we have five pair of pants, so again, combin, five pair of pants, and we are choosing two of them. So here's what I have, 84, six, and 10. What do I do with that? Well, we are going to be packing shirts and shoes and pants. 
What does that mean? When I'm using the word and, that means there's more than one event taking place, so I'm multiplying. So this is really just the fundamental counting principle that says if there are 84 shirts and there are six shoes and there are 10 ways to pack pants, then there are 50, or 5,040 different ways that she can pack for her trip. So again, I used the combination rule here, but here I'm using the multiplication rule, which is really just the fundamental counting principle. Here are some questions that I would like for you to try on your own. So try all three parts of this question, and when you are ready, press play to see how you did. So what we're dealing with is we have a committee of six teachers. There are eight first grade, nine second grade, and seven third grade teachers. So first thing I need to know is the total number of teachers. Now, yes, you can certainly do the sum in your head, but let's go ahead and just use Excel for everything. So I have 24 total teachers. Now, if I'm choosing six of them, how many ways can the committee be formed? So I'm just going to put A, and A is how many ways can the committee be formed? Well, if there are 24 teachers and I'm choosing six of them, and it's a committee, which means it doesn't matter the order in which the teachers are put in the committee, then I'm dealing with a combination of 24 choose six. So I have 134,596 options. For B, in how many ways can the committee be formed if there must be two teachers chosen from each grade? Okay, so let's think about, this is not the solution for B, but let's think about numbers that we'll need for B. So let's go ahead and just highlight this guy so we know that's the solution. For B, I need to know if there are two from each grade. So I need two from the first grade and ways to get two from the second grade and ways to get two from the third grade. So if there were um, eight first grade, so I'm going to choose combination and there were eight of them and I'm choosing two. So that's the 28 different ways I could choose two first grade teachers. And then I'm going to do the same for second grade. There were nine second grade, I'm still choosing two. And for third grade, there were seven and I'm still choosing two. Now what am I going to do with those numbers? Again, this is fundamental counting principle. This is the n total. So this is the solution, essentially. The total number of ways to have two from each grade would be the total of first grade times the total of second grade times the total of third grade. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. So the question for B, how many ways can the committee be formed if there must be two from each grade, is 21,168. Suppose the committee ch is chosen at random with no restrictions, what's the probability that two teachers from each grade are represented? So now we're finding the probability. And remember, A was the total number of ways the committee could be formed, and B was the number of ways if there were two from each grade. So for C, I'm simply going to take C9 divided by C3. I'm going to take my answer for B, divided by my answer for A, and again, that is my probability. The probability is about 16%. Nice work getting through that practice with me. Again, don't be hard on yourself. If those are difficult for you, they are expected to be. Up next, we're going to continue on to our next chapter. We're going to start looking at the expected value of discrete probability distributions.